What's up everyone? In today's video, we're gonna take a first look at the new modular dashboards by Payload CMS. I have not done any kind of research into these yet, so I'm just spinning up the camera and we're gonna go dive into the dashboards to see what we can figure out. I know that this is in beta, so there are a few issues that are still being worked out, but I'm hoping that we can at least get something up and running even with a basic project. So this is only available on version 3.69 and after. So we'll take a look and see what we can come up with. Let's just, we're gonna start with a new project. So we'll go to desktop first, then we'll go to where I have my tutorial repos. And then I have all this in a mono repo now, and then this will be for the payload. All right. And then we're gonna run a PNPX create payload app. And so this is going to install at the most recent version, which means that the dashboards should appear immediately. So this is going to be modular dashboard first look. We'll do the website. It'll be a MongoDB. So here's the website template. Let's put this over on the right half, put this over on the left half. I'm done with my terminal so I can close that. And now let's take a look at our payload config, which should be in source, payload config. And I'm actually, let's go ahead and um, get add git commit init commit. And then we're going to run pnpm dev to get this up and running and see what we have by default in the website template, because I don't think it's going to have the dashboard by any means. But if I go to localhost, do admin, let that load up. So we're gonna sign up with my normal test user. Not now, all right, so, yep, so we've got a dashboard here, that's perfect, but I'm gonna wanna look into how to actually add it. All right, so we're gonna seed the database. We're not going to add any of this. We don't need that anymore, so I can get rid of this, and that should disappear. All right, so then we have dashboard. Where is the dashboard added? Is it just by default then? So it looks like the dashboard is on by default. So let's take a look at the dashboard, since it seems to be whenever you install a new project at 3.69 or after, it automatically comes with this dashboard dropdown. And here I can edit the dashboard. Well, first, here it says reset layout. I assume, and we'll see here in a second, that this is going to save to my preferences. So to my preferences, it's going to write what I have as my dashboard. So let's go ahead and edit the dashboard and we're going to add our collections widget, okay? So we can have multiple collection widgets. Interesting, so that's only gonna be full. So I can only add my collections widget. That means that there has to be something else we can do here. So in components, there's no dashboard here. Is there a dashboard here? There is, all right. So now we can take a look beyond the default dashboard here, which is the collections and globals. We can click into this and see what our dashboard config has. So it looks like we have a widgets array or a widgets option as well, which does take an array. So I've got that going now. If I save this, let's see what happens to my dashboard up here. So collections is still there by default. Let's refresh before I actually make that claim. We still have collections by default. Now in the widgets themselves, we have an array of widgets, which then has a component path, label, max and min width, and a slug. Let's just get something going here. Component path is a string. So we are going to be using import maps to make this happen. So what we could do is for our widgets, in here we're going to create a new file, and for this file we're going to create a widgets folder. And the first widget I'm going to create is a uh, collection count. And we'll just do a TSX file here. We'll do this like any other custom field, I believe. So before we even do anything, let's export a default collection count and we're just gonna return an H1. This is a test. Export default collection count. Then we can come over to our payload config. 
widget. So the widget array is going to expect a component path. And that component path is going to be not all of that. And then a slug. Okay. So we need to add a slug, and this is going to be collection count. So let's see what this ends up looking like. If I go to my dashboard again, I can add a collection count, and then we see this is a test. Great. So we have our collection count. So what we need to do is import git payload from payload, import our config from payload config. Then we're going to initialize our payload, but first this needs to be async. So we'll set payload is going to be equal to await get payload config. Let's just get our pages collections. So I'm going to do collections. I guess we have posts. So we're going to limit this to zero. So let's come over back to our dashboard and refresh. So now we can go to our dashboard, we can edit the dashboard and we can add our collection count and we have three posts. Perfect. We can set this to be small, extra large, but none of that's going to matter because maybe if we do a style and we just do a border of one pick solid black, we can add the dashboard. I want to do add collection count. We can see that there now, and then we can do full, extra large, large, medium. All right. So all that looks good. We can save those changes. So then we have max width and mid width, as well as the slug, which we did, and then the label function. So we could just do a label and call this one post count. That is actually gonna be this here. So if I do collection count just to show, yep. So that's that label here. So this label sets the collection count there, but I'll just set this to be post count because that's all I'm doing with this right now. Then we can do a max width and a min width, and then the widget width is these. So I can do something like max width of, we'll say, this probably shouldn't be bigger than medium for what it's doing, and then min width. I don't really need to change this, but we'll do small. So now if I save this, and let's actually reset the layout, go to edit dashboard, add a post count, and now small and medium are all I'm able to get because that's what I set. But for the max width, I could probably go with extra small and go up to medium. I don't really want this to take up more than half the screen. So if I refresh that, let's go add it back and we'll set this to be medium and save those changes. Let's see what else we got here because this is not very flexible right now and it also doesn't look great. So this is where it would be helpful to have payloads UI available because I have to design all these. But that's okay. I want it to match over here. I know we can get import from payload CMS UI, and then there should be a card. So let's set this then to be a card and see what it needs. Title, okay. And then there is no style. So let's refresh this again. And then now we can see that the card is here. But of course, it's expecting a link, which is not great, so I could style this myself to be something a little bit more usable. So it seems that we would need to design this how we want it designed. Because I don't really want this card to be clickable. And then of course I would want to do something like h2 would be, let's say, posts. And then of course we need to do a fragment here. Refresh. We got our posts there, but that doesn't look great either. So instead of the card, let's do it this way. Let's set up a new div. In that div, we'll actually use an h3, which will be post count. Then we can do a, another div that will have collections total docs. So here we're going to have display flex, flex direction column. Then we'll do a background color, not of white, of whatever color this is. So we got that. Then we can do a padding of one rem. And now of course I know I can just copy the styles from the card, but this will work just fine. Border, radius, of half a rem. 
And now if I come in here and do edit dashboard and set this to be extra small, I can see that that is being changed as we speak. And then instead of this, let's do a paragraph tag. We'll do style, font, size is what I'm trying to get. 1.2 rem, we'll see what that looks like. Refresh, okay. Then we will style, add some margin, bottom, and this will be one rem ish. We'll see if that works. Okay, cool. So we have our component path label, max and min width and slug, which means that this is not really a collection count. This is a post count. And then over here, we need to change this to be post count. Then we can, in our widgets, copy this, paste this. This will be a page is count. This will be rename a posts count. Now, I should be able to go and close this up and do another widget, which will be our pages count, pages, posts, page count. So now if we go to our dashboard and we can add a page count, so that's still labeled as post count because I'm a dummy. Let's go here. We need this to be page count as well as this and this and this. So I don't even really need the limit here because I'm only getting the total docs. Get rid of this as well. Get the dashboard. We will add a post count. So we've got our post count and we'll add a page count as well. I guess I can't drag it over there, but if I do medium here and then medium here, or I can drag this up above the collections, which maybe that makes more sense. So I can save these changes. Now, if I go to add a post, new post, required text. So let's publish those changes. If I go back to our collections here, I now see I have four posts instead. So I can do whatever I want with these. So if I wanted to add this link here, I could. So I can copy the link. We're in the posts collection. Let's do another div with a link, which I'm going to get from, not next link, I want to get this import link from payload CMS UI, which is just a wrapper for the next link. So this works out. I can just do add post. And that is going to be, I wonder if I can actually do a button instead. So if I do button, Button. Then the href will just be our, we'll want to change this to be, should have get server side URL. All right, so the link happens inside the button or outside the button. So if I do that link again, so let's import our link as well. So if we do link, that's not the right link. Got the whole href, so I can do this, now the button's wrapped in a link. And if I refresh, I see add post there. And if I click on add post, it brings me to the post thing there. So that means if these, these collections get pushed down because of my widgets, that's okay because I've got it handled. But now, so maybe this actually just needs to be that. Go back to our dashboard, which will be here. So we got four and then now I can click that and get what I need. I can just copy this div, come over to our pages count and do the same thing. We'll do pages instead, add page, can refresh. And now I see that I've got my add page and add post. We can then set this to be extra small and this one to be small and then save changes and we have those there. So a lot of flexibility here with how you design what you have, but let's do a border and we'll do a border over here as well. Now, of course I could have like actual components, like this div is the same as the other div, but none of that really matters because I'm just trying to get this working. So I've got add page, add post. Can I do size? Let's do small. I like that better, but it's still not quite what I want. So what I see right now for the dashboard is that this 
is going to be for my user. So it's going to be a little hard to see because I know it, this text is a little smaller, but by my face, this is all being posted to the payload preferences, which means that my user is the one that will see this. I can reset the preferences. So if I do this and go back to the dashboard, that gets cleared. So if I then edit the dashboard and just we'll add the post count back because it doesn't really matter and save the changes, we'll again see that this posts to my preferences. If I go to users, I can create a new me and save that. We'll log out. So I'm clicking the log out button. Then I can do, I don't see the dashboard that I just created. So right now it doesn't seem to have any default settings. I do think if I remember right, We'll go to the pull request. They have future work here where they're going to have dashboard presets. So those presets will be able to be used by any of your users, but currently in the, the state that it's in right now, will not have any ability to have like a dashboard default. Not yet, this is in beta, as I mentioned at the top of this. So it's not surprising that we don't have that kind of functionality yet but it is on the way. So I'm also looking forward to any kind of, not just default for the presets, like those will be super helpful to have defaults that you can define and use for other people. But I'd like to see some also generic, basic components that are defined for you. Or really what we need is the UI to be exported fully, so I don't have to like design everything from scratch, but to have a way to get my collections or my widgets to match the admin UI. It's really impressive work, so don't get me wrong that a simple Im implementation is a bad thing. Let's go look at our post real quick. And I can see authors, perfect. All right, so what I wanna do is we're gonna set myself as an author here. So I'm gonna publish those changes. And then over my post count, I could do something like, I'll do another div. Um, let's actually do a horizontal rule here. We could do, I'll do sort, I think it's gonna be this way though. And we'll do most recent post, be collections docs zero, that should be right. Then I should be able to do from our most recent post, we can get most recent author, or let's do latest author, and we'll do most recent post meta author. I don't think it's actually meta, so I think it's just gonna be author, populated author. So here we can do populated authors. So then we should set depth to two just to make sure, though I think that's the default. Then down here I can do populated or uh, latest author dot name. So first it does need to be negative created at. Then we need latest author is gonna actually be this. And then we should be able to get name from there. So now if I save that and refresh, I get the latest author, last post published by. And now I see down here at the bottom that I can say who the last post was published by. So if I add a post, I can then set my author to demo author, required, required. So put in all of our required fields, publish that, go back to our dashboard, and I can see now that the last post published was by the demo author. And that's it for modular dashboards. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. That support means so much to me. There are ways you can support me in the description through Patreon, YouTube memberships, as well as my newsletter, Next in Dev. If you have comments or questions, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.